So those who don't get, didn't get everything they wanted, it's time to just buck up here, understand that we can make things better, continue to move forward. That's Vice President Joe Biden last night saying buck up to the Democratic base. That's a little inspirational message there. And you know, I've been meaning to say to you, Rick, can you just stop whining? That'd be great. All right, top line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC's Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Amy Walter. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know, and no whining permitted anywhere near the set. <clears throat> Very, very good call. Good, good. All right, so I will, I will stop doing that because I'm going to start with my first top line. What firewall? Well, there's new polling out today in Connecticut and West Virginia Senate races that show that those two, what we thought were going to be dark blue states, absolutely in play now. The lead in Connecticut for Dick Blumenthal, just three points. A Rasmussen poll coming on the heels of a Democratic-leaning uh, robo-poll in West Virginia, also showing John Racy ahead of Joe Manchin, Remember when these were supposed to be those gimme seats? These were the for safe the ones, yeah. And, and this, what's critical about these, of course, is that if Republicans have any chance of taking over the Senate, they need to put these seats in right. play. You're going to see more, Demo I think, more Democratic attention on those two seats in particular, because if they hold them, then they hold the Senate. That changes the stakes right. for the fall. Next up, Stone Cold. President Obama sat down with Rolling Stone and check out this quote. This is really fascinating as we see the administration tussle with the left. The idea that we've got a lack of enthusiasm in the Democratic base, that people are just sitting on their hands complaining, is just irresponsible. So we see the vice president saying, quit your whining. We're seeing President Obama say, you're being irresponsible if you don't mm -hmm. support us. It, kind of an interesting way to fire off the base because you're, 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 you're chiding them a little bit here. Yeah, I've never found that that is usually an inspirational for, for the hope and change <laughs> mantra. Maybe, maybe Will I Am can record something that does that, that builds <laughs> on this saying buck up and get out there. Get it going, you might exactly. want to think about that. All right, the replacements are next top line with Rahm Emanuel all but out the door. The next question is who replaces him and will there be an interim between now and the end of the year before there's somebody who will be the uh, more permanent replacement? Do they pick somebody who's an insider, somebody who's already part of the team? Or do they go outside? Maybe I've heard there's people like Tom Daschle. Have you heard of him? Never, Sorry. never heard of him, no. And, and I know no one else in this program yeah. has today. But I, I think you can go insider in the short term, certainly, and then begin to look uh, at your broader options. I think it's, you're likely to see his portfolio fall to someone who's already in the inner circle for now. We're just a couple weeks before the midterm elections. Right. This isn't the time you bring in the fresh voice. Then you reassess and say, okay, now what are we going to do moving forward now that we've seen what happens in the midterms? And finally today, Good cop, bad cop, sometimes it's the same cop. Check out these ads. This is from Alan Grayson, the Democratic congressman from Florida. These are both of his ads. Take a look. Taliban Dan Webster, hands off our bodies and our laws. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amy, how can you even play with that? I, 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 don't, even know. I don't even know. <laughs> I, and in fact, I think it just it really does speak for itself. I mean, I will miss him if he does lose this election, simply because I don't think there's anyone else in Congress who would be willing to pull off either one of those. And there's reporting, there's reporting out today that he actually writes the scripts for his own ads. Which really? I believe, what a surprise. I believe that. Yeah, I, believe I don't think any, any um, consultant would take that as That's one right. of their own. That's All right. right. Well, someone mentioned the word Dashel, which brings us to our guest today. Great segues. We love that. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. Nathan Dashel from the Thanks Democratic Governors Association. We should mention that your counterpart at the Republican Governors Association was invited on and declined our request. So, so Nathan, let's talk a little bit about the, the emerging picture right now. You guys are up on the air in, in yes. a couple of states, uh, new ads in Texas, in, in California, and in Florida. Big states. That's and right. you guys are, are playing pretty aggressively there. Yeah, we're actually up in about uh, six to eight states around the country, uh, playing very aggressively. DGA, uh, we've grown as an organization. RGA has grown too. Uh, that's allowed us um, to play with a lot more money this year and spend a lot more to try to win these races. Uh, we're in several states. Uh, we do think we can go on offense this year. There are no fewer than nine states where we think we have a decent chance of picking them up from Republican governors. Can you tell us what those would be? Sure. Uh, and again, I'll say this is this is the floor. It's not the ceiling. But we have in the new in New England, uh, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island, going down south, Georgia, Florida. Then you have uh, Minnesota, uh, our favorite, Texas, and then California, Hawaii. All of these states currently have Republican governors. And all of these states are places where the Democrat is either winning or within striking distance. And the reason this is important is because it says something about this electorate. 
it says what we know the polls are already confirming. This is not a pro-Republican electorate. This is an electorate that might still have some dissatisfaction with politics as an institution, but they're still, particularly at the state level, just as eager to elect a Democrat as they are to elect so a Republican. Go ahead, Amy. Uh, well, I wanted to j just um, go back to, to all this commentary we saw from the president right. and the vice president about this enthusiasm gap. How concerned are you about this, and do you think this is the right way to get the team fired up? It's good. I will say this. I, when I read the president's quote, I thought what he was saying was that the people who are reporting that there's an enthusiasm gap are irresponsible, okay. not that the progressive base is being irresponsible. But he has but, also said in other right. interviews that it's important the base has to really start it, getting out there. It is important, and it is critically important that the base gets out there. Um, the progressive base, and, and a lot of Americans, independents too, did something very, very important in 2008. We've put this country on a new course, and that work is yet to be finished. It's very important that we continue this, and that's why uh, what happens in 2010 is just as important. In fact, it might be more important than what we did in 2008. Why is that message not penetrated then? Why do we hear well, we hear so, so many progressives, and certainly in the polling, there's just less interest on the on the left side than on the right in going out and voting this year. I think that there. Uh, one is, I think, it's been a little bit overstated because I think that what we see coming out of the right is less enthusiasm for Republicans as much as it is the civil war between the right and the far right. There's a lot of noise coming out of the right. There's no question about that. But is that actually enthusiasm for the Republican Party? I don't think so. In fact, if you ask Tea Party members, they will say they're just as disappointed in the Republican Party as they are with the Democratic Party. I also have seen some increase in enthusiasm in our side in the polls as of recent. And part of it is because of the candidates who the Republicans are putting up for office. The Christine O'Donnells, who we've already gotten, um, see, get a lot of attention at the national level, there are six, seven of those running for governor at the state level. And when you see the choices that we have on the ballot this year, and when we shine a light on these candidates, I think you're going to see the progressive base really come out. Uh, I want to ask you about, uh, particularly playing in these larger states, is the thinking that uh, obviously people, people know this is going to be a tough year right. for Democrats, you're likely to lose some governor's offices. If you win some of the big ones, does that kind of mitigate that a little bit? Is that, well, is that the strategy? There are three things that make 2010 so important. We call it the election of a generation. One is the sheer number of races. We have more races than ever before, 24 of which are open. Number two is that a number of these run through important 2012 battlegrounds. And number three is, of course, redistricting. Now, when you look at states like Florida, Texas, and California, three states that we have openly been very optimistic about, all three currently have Republican governors, they're relevant for all of those reasons. Take Florida, for example. It's a big state. Obviously, it's a big open seat governor's race. It's obviously very, very important for the next presidential election. Who's in that governor's mansion? C-2000. And Florida's going to pick up two congressional seats. The governor of Florida has veto authority over redistricting. Mm -hmm. So whoever is in that role is going to make sure that um, the Republicans can't gerrymander their way to uh, more congressional seats or a majority of the state legislature. But then let's, let's turn to the Midwest for a second, a place we haven't talked a lot about. There's one Republican pollster who calls this the killing fields <laughs> for Democrats. These are all it's currently held by Democrats. Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Iowa, <clears throat> where the Democrat is running behind. Can you have a successful night if you lose all of those races? Well, let me say this about those races. One is that um, in a number of those, the polls have closed recently. We just saw a poll, just came out this morning in Ohio, a Fox News poll. As you know, um, as we have said before, Fox, who's a RJ's biggest corporate contributor, <laughs> had a poll that came out today that had Strickland only two points behind. John Kasich has not closed the deal there, and Strickland, I think, is as competitive as ever. In fact, he's actually gaining in the polls. So if you're going to be anyone, you want to be the one with momentum and in Ohio, that's Ted Strickland. You could say the same thing about some of those other states. But let me point out one state you didn't mention, which is Minnesota. Minnesota is uh, a state that currently has a Republican governor. It's proof that the winds of change that might mean one thing at the national level could mean a different thing at the state level. We haven't elected a Democratic governor in Minnesota since 1992. And I think that is a state I expect that we will pick up. And that'll be uh, one of the many bright spots for Democrats in election. Do you think night. the third party candidate has a serious shot here? He's the one person who's been sort of steadily right. gaining in right. the polls. Independent, yeah. yeah, I think the third party candidate has a has a shot of uh, impacting the race. I don't think the third party candidate has a shot of winning the race. Um, my and it's you know right now to be honest with you there have been conflicting views on on who he draws from. I think right now it's probably a net neutral factor, but he certainly has the potential to impact this race. All right, very quickly, we love playing the numbers game with our guests, and our guests don't like to play it as much. <clears throat> Can you tell us right now how many how many Democratic governors are there going to be uh, after November? Well, let me ask. Republicans have said, "quote 
Well, not really a quote. They think they'll have <laughs> 857 Republican governors at the end of this year. Okay. So you think but less not than really? They, <laughs> they, but they've made they made public predictions between 31 and 38. That's what where they think they will be. They're not going to get there. Um, and I think they will um, they'll have a little egg on their face on election night when they don't meet these projections. But that's um, it's going it, to. There's no question in my mind the Republicans don't hit what they think they're going to So 29 hit. plus is the, I, I guess, That's if we're going to give you a number. I, I, we I'm good at math. Go. Right yeah, uh, Nathan Daschle, Democratic Governor Association, thanks for being here. Thank Re you. Really appreciate thanks, it. Thank you.